Alright, so we got some seriously cool glitch effect today. But this isn't my original work or anything. Here's the deal. I was totally bored with the same old repetitive tutorials. About three days ago, I decided to check out Video Copilot, you know, the legendary Andrew Kramer site. He's like my VFX teacher. He's got these OG After Effects tutorials. So while I was scrolling through his site, I stumbled upon this glitch effect. It was like, bam! I knew I had to recreate it in DaVinci Resolve. And here we are. So let's get cracking and dive right into it. Alright, so right-click on the media pool and create a new Fusion composition, drag it to the timeline and click on the Fusion page icon. In Fusion, add a background node and connect its output to media out. Then click on it and press F2 to rename it. Now go to the inspector window and lower the alpha to zero. All right, now right click on the viewer, go to options and untick checker underlay. The reason we brought down the alpha is because we need to make it 3D, you know, but this black screen is just transparency, nothing else. Now add a text node and connect its output with the output of alpha. This will create a merge. Click on the text node, then go to the inspector window and type your word. I'll type glitch. I'm using Bebus Nui font, but you can use anything that suits. Also increase the size to view it properly. All right, let's create the glitch. For that, add a fast noise node and drag it to the viewer. Now we gotta adjust some values. First increase the detail to something like seven, then change the scale to around seven or eight. Also increase the contrast to around 1.7 for now. Okay, now click on the fast noise node, then press shift space and search for mosaic blur. Drag it to the viewer. Now go to the inspector and change the pixel frequency until you get something like this or use the same value as me. Okay, so now add a transform node. What we're gonna do here is untick size and aspect and increase the X size a little, around three for now. Then decrease the Y size around 0.5. Also change the edges to mirror and you will get something like this, which is our displacement map. It looks good, but I guess I'll change it a little. Just increase the contrast a bit more. We need pure black and white pixels, so just play with the contrast a little. Perfect. All right, now click on the text node and add a displace node. Let me arrange these nodes a little. Okay, take the output of the transform node and connect it to the green input of the displace node. Now click on the displace node, go to the inspector window, click on XY, and now bring down the X offset all the way down. Play with X refraction a little. Look at this stretchy glitch effect. Okay, so change the refraction to 0.3 or 0.4 for now. So let's animate the effect. Go to frame 0 and add a keyframe to X refraction. Then move to frame 40 and change the value to 0. Now we will animate the brightness of fast noise. Click on it, go to frame 0, then add a keyframe to it. Change the value until all the noise turns black. Minus 2 is good enough. Now move to frame 40 and increase the brightness until everything is white. You can simply type the value like 2. Okay, now take the output of the transform node and connect it to the blue input of the text node. This will give us this gradient look, and the cool thing is, it actually has transparency. So this is how our animation looks. Cool, isn't it? Alright, let me just enable two viewers again, and move the playhead to around this point. Also, rearrange the nodes as I do. Now select all the nodes till transform and press Ctrl plus C to copy and Ctrl plus V to paste. Now take the output of the transform node and connect it here so that it creates a merge. Now drag the noise node to the viewer. We'll do some changes. First, double click on the brightness to reset it, then increase the scale to 20. Now decrease the brightness until you get something like this, just a little more. Okay, now delete the mosaic blur from this one. Then click on the empty area and add a bitmap node. Press shift and drag it to the node line so it connects properly. Now drag the bitmap and change the low value. We don't need too many white noise. Now if we drag the transform, we'll get something like this. But we gotta make a few changes here as well. So click on the transform node and just decrease the Y size a little. Play with X size as well. Let's preview. So what happened is we got these nice little horizontal lines which add a little bit more variance to the effect. Now select both text and displace nodes and move them up a little. Then copy the displace node two times. Take the output of merge two and connect it with the green input of both displace nodes like this. So if we preview, we'll see our effect is even cooler but it's kind of moving too much on the left. So to fix that, what we need to do is click on each displace node and change the X offset value from minus 0.5 to minus one. Now it looks much better. So I'll stop here, 
but feel free to add as many displaced nodes as you want. You can also add more fast noise nodes to achieve a different look. Just play with them a little. Okay, so click on Mosaic Blur and Add Box Blur. Now it would have been fine if we were making something sticky, but it's weird for glitch. So go to the inspector window and untick same horizontal and vertical. Then decrease vertical strength to zero. The default horizontal value is good, but you can change it a little if you want. Also, if it looks weird, add it after the transform node so it will look good. Time to add some color to our glitch. Click on merge one and add a color corrector node. Then choose the color you want. Let me just move the playhead somewhere so that we can see the glitch clearly. Okay, good. Now scroll down and change the gain a little. Decrease the gamma a bit, just like this. Also, let me decrease the gain a bit. It's too much. Yeah, good. So now we've got this cool blue color. Let's see how it looks. Well, technically, the glitch effect is done, but let me show you how to add the reflection as well. Disconnect the node line from media out and add an image plane 3D. Move it to the right a little, then add a merge and render 3D. Connect its output to media out. As always, the effect has become too small. We'll fix it later. For now, rename the merge 3D as main merge. Now move the image plane to the left a little, then add another merge 3D and name it parent. Now add another image plane and connect the output of color corrector to this one as well. Connect its output to the parent node. Now we've got the same effect on both image planes. Next add a camera node and connect it with the main merge. Of course, it will disappear. So go to the inspector window and change its Z offset to view the effect. Now click on the image plane 3D2, the top one. Go to transform and change the X rotation to minus 180. Now bring down the Y offset till it gets around this point. Okay, let's preview for a sec. Well, our reflection is done. What? Yeah, I know we gotta add the floor as well. All right, so I have this floor texture created by Andrew Kramer. Link is in the description. Rename it as texture. Add image plane 3D to it. Rearrange as me, otherwise you will get confused. Take its output and connect it to the parent node. Go to inspector and change its rotation to 90. Don't worry, it didn't vanish. Just bring down the Y. Also, increase the scale a bit till it covers the area. Change the rotation a little. Well, remember, this isn't the actual way to create the floor, so don't try to do floor typography on it. Once done, disconnect it from the parent. All right, now click on this blank area and search for Vari Blur. Press shift and drag it in between this image plane and color corrector node to connect it here. Now click on the image plane 3D of texture and add render 3D. Rearrange the nodes like me, keep the render 3D on the bottom, then connect its output to the Vari Blur. Click on the Vari Blur and change blur size to 10. Drag the texture upwards a little and add a color corrector node. Now if we increase the contrast, our floor will look much more glossy. But we gotta change something. Click on the image plane 3D and change its rotation till you get a proper view of the floor. Also, increase the size. Click on the Vari Blur and add a box blur this time. Decrease horizontal strength, but keep the vertical. Also, I would recommend adding this blur before Vari Blur, so it won't affect the floor. Now let's add a little camera animation. Select all these nodes and bring them here. Make a little space in between the camera and merge and add a 3D transform node. Rename it as Null. Now find the frame where you see the glitch for the first time. Like for me, it's frame 11. Then move one frame backward and add a keyframe to Z offset and Y rotation. Then go to frame 40 and change the Z offset to move it closer. Now go back to the first frame and change the rotation to something like minus three and on frame 40, make it zero. Just play with these till you get something that looks good. Now let's add glow to it. Click on the main render 3D and add soft glow. Decrease the gain a little and increase glow size slightly. We don't need much. Now we want the glow to stay on the glitch, but not in the text. So go to the same frame as the camera animation and add a keyframe for gain. Then go to frame 40 and decrease gain to zero. Well, I couldn't think of any other way, but if you know something that will keep the glow on the glitch only, then let me know in the comments. Copy the soft glow, and this time increase the glow size a little more. Go to the same frame and decrease gain more. Now let's preview. Okay, so one final thing. Let me show you how to add a colorful background. For that, disconnect the media out from these other nodes and move them somewhere like this. Then add a background node and connect it with media out. Rename it as BG. Now connect the soft glow with this background node via merge. Drag the BG node to the left and add another background node. Connect it as well. 
Now click on this new background node and change its color to something you want, like I will use grayish. Rename it. Now add a rectangle mask to the background node and change its size and position it to the bottom just like me. Then increase its softness way up. You can also type manually. So here I've added another background node for the top and also added a little opening by using a black background. Now let's view the final result. Well this is what we got today. Hope you liked the tutorial. Also, don't forget to check out other videos and contact me via Discord or Gmail for freelancing work or paid edits. All links are given in my channel and description. See ya!